Greetings aviators, thanks for joining us today for this live in-flight flight lesson. We've got this airplane decked out with cameras, wheels in the back seat running the engineering so we can swap from one camera to the next, and it's going to be just like you're sitting in the left seat getting a real flight lesson in real time because that's what we are. We're in the air right now and we're broadcasting right now. Today we're going to be going over to Dahlonega, a little mountain airport in North Georgia. And as you may be able to see, it's pretty bumpy today. It's pretty windy. So uh, we're going to work on some short field technique. Now if you're a Goldfield Ground School member, you've seen that we already have short field technique lessons on the online ground school. And Nate taught those. We're going to go back to the exact same airport at Dahlonega and we're going to do some here in real time. And let's hope that I do them as good as Nate did his. Now right now we're about uh, eight miles out south of the airport, so there's a number of things that we need to be aware of and think about before we get there. We need to think about the traffic pattern altitude, the radio frequencies. Uh, I'm familiar with the airport and there are a lot of mountains on there, so we need to think about that too. Now I could look up the radio frequencies on my GPS or I could look them up on my iPad, but I kind of like to do them in advance and write everything down on a sheet of paper. So here we have the airport identifier, the traffic pattern altitude, which is 2,300 feet. The CTAF is 122.9, and the runway is 1533. Now, Will, let's put, that, uh, let's put up that image of that overhead shot so we can see how the mountains uh, lay out at this airport. So off the north end of the runway, we do have a lot of rapidly rising terrain. Now, typically, people, when they operate at this airport, they land from the south to the north, and they take off from the north to the south. That keeps them away from the from the mountains. Henry County, what we're going to try to do, though, is actually, let's swap that radio over, is we're going to actually, if the winds allow us to, we're going to land from the north, right over the mountains, to really make this thing show up as if it was a, a short field airport. Uh, the runway is 3,000 feet, and it has displaced thresholds. But before we get there, let's take a look at a pre-recorded video clip that we already cut, and let's just kind of review ourselves about short field technique. And we'll just do some circles out here, kill some time while you watch that. Short field operations are something that you can plan on demonstrating during your private pilot check ride or during any standard flight review. Now there's no firm definition as to what constitutes a short field. It could be a runway that's physically short or any runway that has rising terrain or obstructions on the end. Your main source of information about short field technique should be your AFM or POH and the Airman Certification Standards. Your airplane manual explains how to properly configure your airplane for short field takeoffs and landings and should also allow you to calculate ground roll requirements based on density, altitude, and other factors. On a seriously short field takeoff or landing, you definitely want to go through all this material and make absolutely certain that your airplane has sufficient performance. Remember that high density altitude describes low density air. When the air is hot and humid, you must expect decreased performance and allow for this in all short field operations. The airport we'll be operating at today is the Dahlonega Lumpkin County Airport in the North Georgia Mountains. The runway itself is 3,000 feet, so it's not all that short, but it is shorter than most. The main issue here is that rapidly rising terrain and mountains are off the north end. Notice the displaced thresholds. These are marked extensions to the runway surface that may not be used for landing. They can be used for takeoffs and landing rolls, though, so used properly, they do essentially lengthen the runway. During a check ride or landing, do not touch down prior to the displaced threshold. Pretend like there's nothing there. The ACS specifically says that you must touch down within 200 feet beyond the specified point, threshold markings, or runway markings. The examiner may specify a touchdown point, but if not, assume the runway threshold and don't let those tires touch even one inch short of the runway end bar. You may take off in the displaced threshold area, but you may not land there. Don't forget this one. Okay, there's our ground briefing for short field operations. Let's cut back to the flight. Okay, I hope you enjoy that cool little video. We did make reference to the Airman Certification Standards. Now, if you have a check ride coming up and you're working on your short field technique for that, definitely be familiar with the Airman Certification Standards. They say, tell you exactly how the examiner or what the examiner's expectations are going to be during your check ride. If you're going to be doing these for a flight review, you know, the instructor is going to have the same kind of same kind of 
expectations. Uh, the bottom section, the skills section, is the one you really want to go through. We're not going to do spend too much time going through that in the air, but let's do talk about what's going to be involved in this approach, because obviously we're going to be landing this airplane first. Uh, approach speed in this airplane, a Cessna 182, is 60 knots. Uh, the airplane's uh, airplane flying manual specifies that we should land with full flaps. Uh, airman certification standards indicate that we need to touch down at our intended touchdown point, and we're going to make that the threshold of the runway, or 200 feet past. So we've got a really small window. We're going to have to we're going to have to hit on this landing. Uh, ground roll that I found out from looking it up in my pilot's handbook or operator flight manual is should be about 600 feet of ground roll and we should be able to get this thing to stop now that is a assuming some really heavy braking and i'm not sure that we'll be stomping on the brakes that hard one thing we're not going to do is we're not going to raise the flaps during that landing rollout we're going to pay attention to the airplane i'll probably push the carburetor heat in with my thumb but we're going to wait to do everything else until we stop we have a good high coefficient of friction between pavement and rubber tires, uh, dumping the flaps, putting more weight on the tires is not going to make them grab the pavement any harder. So unless they're skidding, unless the tires are skidding on uh, the pavement or we are on wet grass perhaps, there's really no reason to dump the flaps, bring the flaps all the way up during that landing roll. So let's pay attention to the landing and that's what we'll be doing. I've been doing some S-turns around here. We're now about four miles out for the airport, so let me make my first radio call in case we have anybody here uh, in the area. We haven't heard, I've been listening, I haven't heard anybody on the frequency, but let's go ahead and make this radio call. Dahlonega traffic, Skyline 42742 is four miles south. We'll be making uh, left traffic for, uh, we're gonna try to land on uh, 15, the south, the land to the south. We're going to check out the winds first, so Dahlonega. Well, we gave them a rough idea, a little bit more than I would normally give in a traffic call, but that way if we uh, change our plan when we're in the pattern, nobody will be too surprised. So let's start easing our way over towards the airport. Uh, not too hazy today. It's real pretty. It's October, early October, so pretty soon the leaves will be changing colors, and we'll try to get back up here and do a live video then too. Uh, it's just beautiful up here. In fact, I'm starting to see a little bit of color changing. I doubt it's going to show up on the cameras, but uh, some of the leaves are starting to go now. We are at 3,000 feet, and traffic pattern is 2,300 feet. And if we're coming in on the north side of the runway where all the mountains are, we're going to probably fly a little higher than traffic pattern. Man, we're going to probably give ourselves about a 300-foot buffer. So on our attempt at landing on 1-5 to the south, coming in over this mountains, we'll use about 2,600 as our traffic pattern altitude. I see the runway down here, so I'm just about on a crosswind right now. Dahlonega traffic, Skyline 42742 is left crosswind for 15 Dahlonega. All right, so now they know what we are, what our intentions are. Reduce the power a little bit because we're going to start slowing the airplane down, and we're up about 3,000 feet, 2,900 now, so we're going to get down to uh, 26, which we figured would be uh, our traffic pattern altitude, assuming a landing from the north. Coming up on the downwind leg over there now, and we're definitely below these high peaks back here, so, you know, we're going to be... We're going to be out here amongst these hills, so we really got to keep our eyes open. Can't get too fixated everything involved with this landing because we've also got to watch for terrain. This is pretty much a worst case scenario as far as as far as short field operations go. Now if we come in and we manage to make this approach from the, from the north to the south, uh, but we coming in with a tailwind because I can't really see the wind sock down there, we're going to have no trouble, no trouble doing a go around and coming back around and landing to the north. But I did want to take a stab and letting you see what it's like to land on a short runway when you've got real obstructions to deal with. Okay, we're a beam the uh, touchdown point, so let's carburetor heat comes in, pull it back to my normal settings. Gas, undercarriage is down, mixture is rich. We'll do one more pre-landing gump check on final. Delonica traffic, 42742 is left base, 415 Delonica. 
All right, so my touchdown speed is going to be uh, about 60 knots, so we're going to be getting this thing as slow as we possibly can. And we'll just have to see what these mountains do to us. Delonica traffic, 42742 is final for 15 Delonica. I'm a little bit high here. Got the power all the way out. Flaps are in full. Gas is on both. Undercarriage is down. Mixture is rigged. Props are in. Pre-flight, pre-landing checklist is complete. So there's the threshold down there. I want to touch down at the threshold, not an inch before it, although I can land up to two, touchdown up to 200 feet after it. Airspeed's a little high. I uh, see some smoke down there. Looks like down here in the valley we have no real winds to deal with at all. So if I'm starting to come down short, I'm going to put in extra power. But I seem to be keeping a pretty good stabilized approach here. I'm not going to be afraid to set it down firmly either because we want to get this thing on the ground. Get the tires on the pavement. There they are. And it's simulated hard braking. I'm tapping the brakes here. There we are on the center line, and we easily did that. Easily got that done over those mountains and within that 600-foot rollout mark. So I think if you do something like that on a check ride, your examiner will be perfectly happy with you. I'm going to wait till we get off this uh, runway to clean the airplane up, other than getting the carburetor heat in. Good idea to keep the hard carburetor heat off if you don't have a fuel-injected uh, airplane when you're on the ground, because it does tend to bring in unfiltered air, which means you could get dust, debris, gravel, all sorts of things sucked up in there. So carburetor, carburetor heat off on the ground. Now what we're going to do is we're going to taxi down here to the end. We're going to turn back around and we are going to do a short field takeoff going back towards the mountains again. The wind sock is calm, so there's really no issues with wind here. All that's going to matter is our ability to do this properly. Now, when we get back to the get turned around back to the whole short line, we'll just do a real quick briefing on what's involved with a short field takeoff. All right, pulling off the runway. As soon as I get past the whole short line up here ahead, I'll make a radio call. All right, the airplane's completely across the whole short line. Dahlonega traffic, 42742 is clear of the runway, Dahlonega. All right, so let's clean the airplane up. Let's uh, raise the flaps, lean it so that I don't foul the plugs as we taxi here. Open my cow flaps, which are something that you don't have in a Warrior or a 172 or a, or a, or a Diamond. All right, we're just going to go around here and do a little teardrop and go right back to that same whole short line. And then we'll take a real quick briefing about what to expect on this short field takeoff, and then we'll go and do it. All right, so I'm going to stop short of the whole short line here. we got solid bars, so I can't cross these until I've uh, cleared myself or made the announcement that I'm going to be taking the runway. Now, straight ahead up here on the right, you can see, uh, well, let's go back to that front, sh that tail shot again. Up there on the right, you can see the, the at the end of the runway surface, although the actual runway threshold is about five or 600 feet off to the left out of the frame here, but we can take off in this displaced threshold area, although we're not allowed to land on it. So we're going to taxi out there. We're going to get the tires right back there towards the edge of that asphalt, and we are going to use every bit of available takeoff area just to get as much runway available to us as possible. Okay, so the takeoff, according to the pilot's operating handbook for this airplane, is with 20 degrees of flaps. Once we get the tires out there on the edge of that pavement, we're going to hold the brakes. We're going to put in full power. We'll release that power because we want to get this thing accelerating on the ground as quickly as possible. And we'll immediately have to put in some right rudder because the left turning tendencies, of primarily torque and spiraling slipstream, are going to turn us to the left. So we're going to immediately have to get some right rudder in there and we will then climb out at VX until we clear these obstacles uh, and then we'll lower the nose a little and pitch for VY. So let's taxi on out there after I make my call. I don't have to do a run up because the engine's still running. We haven't shut the engine down. 
Dahlonega traffic 42742 is taking runway 3. Dahlonega. All right, now let's uh, let's see how close we could get these tires, this right main gear to the edge of the pavement because I want to use every bit of it. All right, let's rotate the airplane, get it on the airplane, get it on the center line using all available takeoff area. I'll make sure my nose wheel is straight. There it is. Okay, so we're going to put in 20 degrees of flaps. I'm going to make my last check of my systems here and off we go Dahlonega traffic 42742 is departing 33 to the north Dahlonega full power we're holding it now we'll release the brakes and stay on this center line airspeed's alive all the engine, engine gauges looking good look good All right, we'll lift off, and we're going to hold VX here. I have to kind of lean over to see the airspeed indicator. So, out front, if we can get to that tail cam wheel, you can see we are, we got trees, mountains, and rising terrain all around us, so we really need to hold VX here. Still got my flaps in, still got full power, we're still climbing at VX. I do still have some mountains straight out to the front here, but I think at this point we've cleared all the obstacles right here immediately at the end of the runway, so we're going to lower the nose slightly and accelerate to VY, and the VY in this airplane is 76 knots. And now I'm going to start to take my flaps out, there's back to flaps 10, change my trim with that. There's a mountain straight ahead, but we're going to turn out before we get there. All right, we're still got a positive rate of climb, still like we're doing uh, very close to 76. So let's take all the flaps out. And as we approach these mountains here, we got plenty of room to do a turn out to the turn out to the left, and I'll make a traffic call. Want to go traffic? 42742 is on the left crosswind for 33. We'll be departing the area to the south. Alonigo. There's the runway back there. There's mountains off. Uh, I'm going to lower this wing and maybe you can see them through this, uh, through my window shot. Let's go to that pilot cam. There. See some mountains there. That's what we got off to our north. However, down to the south, it's all clear. So we're going to complete our turn here. We'll be coming out on the downwind leg, but we're still climbing. But I'm going to make a call here just so. 404, overhead 2500. He's circling for left downwind, runway 6 Lenora. All right, he's at a different airport, so he's not here. Okay, we're still in the downwind here, although we're leaving the pattern and we're real high. I'm going to make a final traffic call. So Monica traffic, Skyline 42742 is on a left downwind for 33, departing the area to the south. Alonica. Okay, that is how you do a short field technique at a real, honest to gosh, short field in the mountains on a bumpy day, although we were lucky that when we got down, down to the uh, airport level, it was pretty much calm. Uh, so, your goal now is to give us some comments, tell us how you like this. We'll be doing some more of these live in the airplane flight lessons, and let's hear from you. Uh, if you're a Gold Seal member, go to OnlineGroundSchool.com. Go review the online the uh, short field technique lessons in the ground school. You can see how Nate did them. And uh, check out our YouTube channel. We'll be posting this on Facebook as well as YouTube. And other than that, we're heading off to the south. It's a beautiful day. So, good flying.